Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be how to think like and become a champion. Well, I want to talk about the psychology of success, the psychology of a winner, the psychology of a professional athlete, the psychology of a super high achiever, somebody that constantly throughout their life states a goal that they want, and then they go after it, and after some point in time, maybe it takes five years, 10 years, 20 years, whatever it happens to be, they actually eventually achieve that particular goal or result. And so what's the difference? Why is it that some people achieve their goals and achieve extraordinary things, and other people fall short and fail to reach their full potential? Well, most people are living lives of mediocrity and quiet desperation. Human beings will do more to avoid pain than they will do to gain pleasure. And so for most people, the thought of going after the things they want, it's a long, hard process. And for a lot of people, they don't actually even take the time to figure out what it is that they really want or what's most important to them. Because they're just so focused on trying to eke out a living or trying to survive or to pay the bills or whatever it happens to be, they end up getting involved in a lot of friendships, relationships, career relationships, or entrepreneur or business relationships that often can be relationships with people that are really not ideal or that don't support their personality. And so when we look in the corporate world at a company that, like a company like Apple versus a, a company that's no longer in business or a company that does well for a while and then falls short. It's like you look at a company like Apple, I mean, right now they're on top of the world and they're just making money hand over fist. And if you look at their culture, you know, from the top down and how it was founded and what is endemic throughout, it doesn't matter where they work, whether you're in one of their retail stores or their corporate headquarters or dealing with some tech support over the phone, you're always dealing with people that really believe and the product and believe in what they're doing and they believe in the company and they believe in the core values and they absolutely love what they're doing. You know, I was just recently in, in one of their stores the other day getting some things done on my computer and the guy that was working on it was a fucking genius. Young kid just zipped all right through all everything I knew how to do and he had a passion for it and he was obviously very good at it. And that's what happens when you, you have a good core values in a company, you attract great people. And when you have people that come to work for you and you have a, a set of core values, like attracts like you know questions that you know it's like what what types of questions do professional athletes ask themselves you look at somebody and you look at it this way it's like ask yourself this question it's like what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail think about it have you ever taken the time to think about what would i do if i knew i couldn't fail what kind of life would you have what kind of lifestyle would you have what kind of business would you have what kind of career would you have what kind of house would you live in? Where would you live? What kinds of people would you be spending your time with? Where would you enjoy your time at? Where, how would you spend your money? Where are the kind of places that you would vacation at? What kinds of companies would you build? What kind of people would you spend your spare time with? What kinds of things would you do with your family? Would you have kids? Would you be married? Would you have multiple girlfriends? I mean, what is it? What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? And the second thing I want you to think about is what do you think you should be getting paid? I mean, what kind of money would you be earning to where you'd pinch yourself one day and just go, I can't fucking believe I'm getting paid to do this. Not only am I getting paid to do this, I'm getting paid this much to do this. That's something to think about. And a third thing that I, I want you to consider is what would you do if you could have any kind of job or career in the world? And it would have to be something that you love so much that you do it for free. I mean, let's, let's look at professional athletes, professional basketball players. I mean, like, look at a couple years ago, you know, like right now, you look at someone like LeBron James and uh, Dwayne Wade, who are two arguably the best basketball players in the world right now. And you look at the, you know, a couple seasons ago when, or I should say it was just last last season when, when Pat Riley pulled off the ultimate trade of the century as they call it where LeBron James came to Miami when he could have stayed in Cleveland or he had plenty of other teams I think four or five other teams they were trying to get him to come there and it's like so where do they go and it's like well, why did they go there and I'm like you know in the media when I was listening to the owner of the, of the Cavaliers and what he was doing to get LeBron to stay and, and what 
Pat Riley was presenting to him. You know, it's interesting. I, I, I got a, a video on here that Pat Riley did in an ESPN uh, uh, interview several years ago. And one of the texts that he sends to Dwayne Wade is one of the star players is capital B I W, and it stands for best in the world. And that's what he's seeking to create, best in the world. That's his culture. I mean, if you looked at what he did for several years, he planned to make cap space. So when LeBron and Chris Bosh and these other guys were available during free agency, they had plenty of money to sign these guys. And he's planned this out two to three years in advance. He knew what he wanted. He had a goal, he had an outcome, and he was determined to get it. Well, when you look at what the owner of the Cavaliers was doing, it's like that. I remember them, I think they got it, you know, had a movie made, and they were like pulling at LeBron's tugging at his heartstrings to try to get him to stay in the city and and you know from everything that I heard that was communicated in the media and what he had shared publicly of, of what their presentation was it's like who who would you sign with well I'm gonna go with the guy that's a fucking champion the guy that's been there done that got got the t-shirt I mean LeBron had already been to the finals and failed once so obviously he's looking to improve his situation so that you know I look at that it's why Pat Ryan was able to pull it off and everybody else was left with a big fat donut when it came to free agency and so that's the difference between a champion and the fourth thing i want you to consider is think about some things that you would love to have in your life a house car what kind of car i mean all of those things it's like so how how is it you think like a champion it's like when, when i do what i do and like when i talk to people and they're amazed at how i'm able to help them or how they can tell me just a little bit about their situation what he's doing what she's doing what he's saying what she's saying and I can zero in right on what's going on, even though I don't know these two people personally. I haven't watched them. I haven't interacted with them personally. It's because I'm the best in the world at what I do. There's absolutely nobody else in the planet that can do what I do in the way that I can do it. And that can and can help people in the way that I can help people. And that's what's beautiful about life is every single one of us, we have unique gifts and talents and skills that are unique to us. That And we have life experiences that have taught us and learned us skills and trades in a way that we can bring those skills and talents together based upon our life experience and our knowledge in a way that benefits others. I mean, me, I'm a life coach. You know, I used to be a licensed real estate broker and a mortgage broker. I used to do all those things years and years ago. I, and even before that, I was in the construction industry, so I'm a builder. I, you know, I'm, I'm a, I have a state certified general contractor's license. And so that's just another thing that I happen to know how to do that I'm good at and it's good information that I have. And so based on that life experience, just all these broad things of achieving and succeeding in other industries, that I'm, I bring it to my life, practice, life coaching practice and I'm able to help people in that way. And the reason I'm successful is because I love it. I have a passion for it. I mean, there were a lot of years when I didn't, I didn't know what my business model, model was going to be to make it profitable, make it successful, and make it grow. But I had a burning desire. I had a passion. And you look at somebody like LeBron James or... Or Dwayne Wade. <clears throat> Dwayne Wade has known that he wanted to be an NBA player since he was a little kid. And when he was growing up, Michael Jordan was the world's best player. And so he used to, you know, he was watch them in the playoffs. And so he'd go out there and, and play hoops in the driveway or at school or wherever, you know, he could, he could get a game. And he was always working on his shot, trying to get better. And so you look at somebody like Dwayne Wade, oh, he's so amazing. He's so awesome. It's like, well, yeah, he's been doing that since he's a little boy. Or you look at somebody like Tiger Woods, it's like, you know, I got a video on my on my article I wrote about Tiger Woods. It was like when he was in the Johnny Carson star show in I think it was the late eighties or early nineties. When he was just, I think it was obviously it was late there sometime in the eighties. He's a little boy, he was like five, six years old and he's sinking putts in the Johnny Carson show. And you're like, Well why is so he's so awesome? It was like, Well he's been doing it since he was a little boy. Or like why was Michael Jackson such a great singer? Well we've been doing this shit since he was a little boy. It's repetitions of other skill and so if you have something that you're passionate for, I mean you look like What's his name? Justin Bieber. They, you know, he's like a little kid. He just at some point he's like, I'm gonna be a singer, and so he started singing. And his parents and his family just supported him and gave him everything he needed. And he just kept practicing, practicing, practicing. And then he started going to the malls and performing. He just wanted to sing, and he was good at it. He became good at it. He became good at dancing, and then eventually he got the notice and of somebody in the industry, and he got signed. And the, the kid's a multi multi millionaire and he's I don't even think he's even eighteen or he may I think he's just turned eighteen yet, but he's been doing this stuff ever since you know basically almost as long as he's been able to talk and to walk. And that's you know, some people they figure out their purpose is early in life, but it doesn't matter where you're at. The past doesn't equal the future. It doesn't matter if you were a total douchebag 
five minutes ago or before you watch this video and you're like, ah, oh, now I don't know what to do with my life. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is what you do right now because whatever goal you set for yourself, you got to make sure it's something you have a passion for because if you don't, you'll just quit when it gets hard. And so choose something you got a passion for and move in that direction. It may take you five years, 10 years. It may take you 20 years to accomplish it. It doesn't matter. It's all about the journey. So if you find this message of value, you can show your appreciation by going down to the Wibby toolbar, which is at the bottom of your screen if you're watching this video on my website, and click the PayPal Donate button and donate any amount that you feel is equal to the value of the information in this video. At the very least, please share this page with all your friends and family by clicking any one of the social network sharing buttons, which are also located in the Wibby toolbar at the bottom of your screen. And if you have a question that you want to ask me, or there's a topic that you want me to cover in a future video newsletter, click the Contact Me tab on the left-hand side of your screen and send me three or four paragraphs maximum detailing your situation and your questions. And just give me several days to get back to you with a response because I get a lot of email from the Internet and I also get a lot of it from my paying phone coaching customers. And I obviously got to concentrate on their emails first. But be patient. I will get back to you. And if you want to talk to me right away, the quickest way to get a hold of me so I can help you is to book a paid phone coaching session by clicking the products tab at the top of your screen and just follow the instructions. And I will talk to you soon.